Hey guys, it's Miss Weddle, and today is Tuesday, April 7th, and this is our eighth e learning lesson. I'm sorry, no, it's not. It's our 11th e learning lesson. And so each day I am going to do the lesson with you. Um, you do not see my face. What you do see is a copy of the screen share um, of my computer screen so that you can follow along while I'm reading and do the answers at the end. So hopefully um, as you're reading, and I'm gonna do this just like class, so I'm not gonna edit anything out. So please excuse if my kids or my dog or something happens or I spill a drink or I don't know anything, but um, I am going to go through the lesson with you um, and hopefully this helps, and then you're going to answer the questions on Canvas and submit them so that you can grade them. If you don't get 70% or more correct, I will have you redo it so that I can give you your points. So I'm going to get started and just follow along with me. You can pause me, um, any of that good stuff if you have to go do something but don't forget to come back and finish the lesson. So let's get into lesson 11. So, okay. Um, our standard is RL 2.1. The summary students will, will read a piece of literature entitled Uncle Marcos and respond to the questions that require them to make inferences and select the best evidence to support the inferences made. Our learning target is um, to cite the textual evidence that most strongly supports an analysis of what the text says explicitly as well as inferences drawn from the text. And our success criteria during the lesson, students will know they have mastered these learning targets because they are able to show they have fulfilled the following success criteria. One, I can determine explicit and inferred, or I can define explicit and inferred. I can identify and determine several pieces of evidence in the text that support what is explicitly stated in the text, what is inferred in the text. I can cite pieces of text evidence that support, um, introduce author, paragraph, and page, and use proper citation formatting. So to start off before we get in the lesson, explicit, if something is explicit, it means it's directly stated within the text, and if it's inferred, you are using information from the text to make um, an assumption based on uh, what you've read. So explicit, it says it in the text. Inferred, you have to draw that conclusion based on what you've read. It is not stated. So let's look at task one. Read the jumpstart and about the author. Next, read Uncle Marcos. As you read, pause and consider your response to the close uh, close read in the margins. So we'll see questions in the margins as we go. Jump start. First read, are you, first read, are you an explorer? Do you have an insatiable appetite for adventure? Where would you go? The world is a big place and there are many adventures to be had. So to answer that question, I would say I am a bit of an explorer. I like to try new things, um, go on new adventures, travel around. Um, if I could go anywhere in the world um, right now, I would go to, hmm, I'd probably go to Paris, France, up in the Eiffel Tower because I hear the view is spectacular. Um, the most interesting place I've been so far in my adventures is Australia. I've visited the Great Barrier Reef. So, um, leave me a comment down below. Um, 
where would you go if you could adventure anywhere? I'm sure we'd all like to adventure outside of our homes right now. So about our author, Isabel Allende is a Chilean-American novelist, essayist, and lecturer who has been called the world's most widely read Spanish language author. Allende's novels combine elements of myth and realism, magical realism, and are often based on her personal experiences. In 1992, after the tragic death of her daughter, she established a foundation dedicated to the protection and empowerment of women and children worldwide. Ellen Day became a U.S. citizen in 1993 and in 2014 was awarded the Presidential Medal of Freedom by President Barack Obama. Okay. Uncle Marcos from the House of Spirits, Isabel Allen Day. Okay. Some background information. Uncle Marcos is from Isabel Allen Day's first novel, which began as a letter to her hundred year old grandfather. This excerpt draws on the Greek myth of Icolus and Daedalus. In the myth, Daedalus invents a pair of wings and teaches his son how to use them, but warns him not to fly too close to the sun because the wax and the wings would melt. Icarus is too excited to listen, and he drowns in the ocean after his wings melt. So on the side, right side of our screen, you're going to see the close reading questions, and I'm going to pull them up in my actual book, too, because I have the answers. So I want to help you guys along with this so that I can add value to those of you who are listening to me and trying to complete this assignment. I want to make it a little bit easier for you. Okay, 449. Let me find my page in the book. Okay, I found it. So we are going to look at these questions before we so we can focus our reading um it says we're going to annotate so if you think back to when um we were doing the article of the week annotate just means to highlight and i don't think we can highlight on here i don't think so No, but I will tell you what to highlight when we need to. Oh, because I don't have request to ed access to edit. Let's see. I sent. Um, so it says annotate in paragraph one. Mark D tells that show how Clara pictures her uncle, particularly his mustache and smile. And then question, why does the author use these descriptive details and conclude, what is the effect of these details? So we're going to read paragraph one and then refer back to these questions. It had been two years since Clara had last seen her uncle Marcos, but she remembered him very well. He was the, he was the only perfectly clear image she retained from her whole childhood, and in order to to describe him, she did not need to consult the daguerreotype in the drawing room that showed him dressed as an explorer, leaning on an old-fashioned double-barreled rifle with his right foot on the neck of a Malayan tiger, the same triumphant position in which she had seen the virgin standing between plaster clouds and piled angels in the main altar one foot on the vanquished devil. All Clara had to do to see her uncle was close her eyes, and there he was, weather-beaten and thin, with a pirate's mustache through which his strange, shark-like smile peered out at her. He seemed, 
It seemed possible that he could be inside that long black box that was lying in the middle of the courtyard. So, it asks us to mark the details that show how Clara pictures her uncle, particularly his smile and mustache. Um, right here. All Clara had to do is see her uncle. All Clara had to do to see her uncle was close her eyes, and there he was, weather beaten and thin, with a pirate's mustache through which his strange shark like smile peered out at her. And the question why does the author use these descriptive details? Well, I would say that the author uses those details because he, she is trying to show um, that he had a unique look. You know, he had a pirate's mustache and strange shark like um, teeth. And uh, so she's very descriptive um, in his smile. And I believe that these. This description affects um, the this description and all of the details is what it's making you want to read more and learn about the strange uncle. Maybe it's may helping you connect to the story. Maybe you have a strange uncle, um, and so already it's kind of engaged the reader. So let's scroll up a little bit. Okay. And continue on. Each time our Uncle Marcos had visited his sister Nevaeh's home, he had stayed for several months to the immense joy of his nieces and nephews, particularly Clara, causing a storm in which the sharp lines of domestic order blurred. The house became a clutter of trucks, of animals in jars, of formaldehyde, of Indian lances and sailors' bundles, in every part of the house, people kept tripping over his equipment, and all sorts of unfamiliar animals appeared that had traveled from remote lands only to meet their deaths beneath Nana's irate broom in the farthest corners of the house. Uncle Marcos's manners were those of a cannibal. As Sarvo put it, he spent the whole night making incomprehensible movements in the drawing room, Later, they turned out to be exercises designed to perfect the mind's control over the body and to improve digestion. He performed alchemy experiments in the kitchen, filling the house with faded smoke and ruining pots and pans with solid substances that stuck to their bottoms and were impossible to remove. While the rest of the household tried to sleep, he dragged his suitcases up and down the halls, practiced making strange high-pitched sounds on savage instruments, and taught Spanish to a parrot whose native language was an asmonic dialect. dialect. During the day, he slept in a hammock that he had strung between two columns in the, ha in the hall. Wearing only a loincloth that put Servo in, the in a terrible mood, but that Nevaeh forgave because Marcos had convinced her that it was the same costume in which Jesus of Nazareth had preached. Clara remembered perfectly, even though she had been only a tiny child the first time her uncle Marcos came to the house after one of his voyages. He settled in as if he'd planned to stay forever. After a short time, bored with having to 